more than welcome to change your name, you know, to change the name that you want so that if you don't want your name to be. So I, the, this video will be shared afterwards alongside with um, a post workshop um, email sharing further resources that Anne, Chloe and I are just going to ch touch in very quickly uh, to give context to the, to the workshop and so that you have some more resources to follow in. So I'm going to do this email uh, probably tonight or tomorrow morning. So you can, you can watch out your inbox for that. There are a few people in this call that are uh, empathy angels and they have, they, they're providing space throughout the whole summit for, um, for empathy so that you can be with your feelings and uh, they have, they are in this call with a little star before their names. So you can already see that like, I see two people at the moment. Uh, also, I would like to ask it, some of you, uh, for, to all of you, who is calling from a phone or a tablet? Uh, this is because we might need to move you manually for, um, uh, for, for the, the breakout room. So if you are, if you are, using a, a phone or a tablet, just write it in the chat so that we know it, it needs to be moved because you have li limited availabilities for the Zoom call. Okay. If for some reason your internet connection or something um, doesn't work well and you, the, the call gets disconnected, you can use the same link to come back in and, uh, and Chloe or I will admit you right back down and then if you are in a breakout room we will put you back in the breakout room okay yeah that's I, I would just want to add something that if as much as possible if you could have your video turned on especially during the breakout rooms because we'll be doing exercises and it's just it helps with the connection and our ability to be connected and vulnerable and share so if you can, there's just a few people that I see don't have your camera on. That would be fantastic. And we'll start right now with a connecting exercise. And for this, we will need to get closer to the screen. If you can get a little closer to the screen and take a deep breath. And let go of the space that you were in just before, okay? You might have been with friends or with family or having breakfast or something, okay? This is a different space with a different purpose. And this is your team, okay? This is your team. There's about 50 people here in your circle to dive into the research and experiment and practice of conflict alchemy. So if you could just look closer and connect with people who are on your screen and really look for at least 10 seconds okay really take your time for your being to connect with their being keep breathing Okay, I'm going to start speaking. It doesn't mean you have to cut your being to being connection, okay? Keep being connected and you can split your attention and, and listen and at the, same, at the same time be connected. This is going to be a work talk, meaning that Vera and I will do a little bit of the talking and you will be doing a lot of the working. And that means we're going to break you out in groups 
in breakout rooms mostly, and then we'll come back and have some sharing and maybe some questions, but mostly you'll be in breakout room doing the work. And you might be feeling something. You might get some what we call feedback from people. So I just want to be clear about that. So anybody who does not want to feel or who doesn't want to get uh, reflection, what we use the word feedback in possibility management, this would be the moment to leave. So there's nothing wrong or bad about this. You've got a great five minute connection with people. And if this is not what you're interested in, that's fine. We just have different hobbies. Mm -hmm. Okay, it seems like nobody left yet. Great. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I say that really sort of seriously, in, even if I'm smiling, is this is a hobby. I think this is really a hobby that, that we call conflict transformation or conflict alchemy. Some people call it empathy work. I also call it con the evolution of consciousness. This is nothing good or superior or wonderful about us. And there's nothing bad about people who don't want to do this work. Some people love to fish. Some people love to knit. Some people love to play football. And we just love to talk and share our vulnerability and try to find the best way to turn conflict into gold. Okay, so this is, this is what we're going to do today is subtle conflicts are more abundant than most people think. Each conflict is a doorway to a new possibility of co-creation if you approach it as a conflict alchemist. So I'm considering each and every one of you a conflict alchemist or a conflict alchemist in training. And this space is, is going to be a clear space of practice to empower you with five nonlinear conflict alchemy tools to use in your everyday life. Okay, I'm not joking about all, what, all of what possibility management offers, everything that you read, everything that you uh, try as an exercise is all copyleft. It is all copyleft. It means that it cannot be copyrighted. So take it, steal it. Do your own work talk, do your own workshop, use it in your company, make money, become rich and famous, way better, way more rich and famous than Verena I are, and you will do great. Okay, so there's no, you don't have to ask us if you can use this stuff. The answer is yes. Okay. I would like to jump in straight away in a breakout room. And I just, so I just noticed that uh, Richard and Melissa, when there's going to be breakout room in pairs, then you will be doing it together. Okay, we'll put you alone in your breakout room and then you'll just do the exercise together. Great. Um, yes. You want to say so, something? Yeah, no, I wanted to, to go to, into our breakout rooms. Uh, we're just going to, it is important to have, uh, it can be important to have a distinction. So every, every communication has inf is composed of information plus your feelings the energy of your feelings every communication is made up of information and your feelings and so when we communicate there is a purpose around that so because we're we're going to do this next uh practice together uh i want to bring the clarity that we distinguish uh, we can distinguish four distinct feelings they are Anger, sadness, fear, and joy. Anger, sadness, fear, and joy. And we're, I want you to go in, when we go into breakout rooms, to, to, to be in pairs, and we take turns for three and a half minutes, and I want you to go into your feelings and just say, I feel whatever, if it's anger, and what is it about? So I feel angry because it's, it's too cold and I want it to be hot right now. Or I feel, I feel scared because I um, forgot to go to the toilet. Uh, I feel sad because um, I, didn't, I didn't eat uh, my favorite food today. So, or it could, be, it could be whatever you have, okay? So you're gonna go into pairs, into groups of two, 
and you're going to say all of these four feelings for the three and a half minutes, and then you're going to switch roles. Any questions? Do so we, it's not about do what we dialogue with each other. No, thank you. Thank you for that question. So this one person is sharing, the other person is creates a listening space. Listening space where you, you're just listening to what them creating a space, safe space for that person to reveal themselves to you of what their feelings are and what the feeling is about. So you, the listener stays quiet. Yeah. And thank you. The listen, as a listener, you can just say thank you. They're just giving you really gold that they've shared what they're feeling. So just thank you. And that's great. Yeah. So after the three and a half, so we do one person, three and a half minute, you go through all four feelings. If you have been through all four feelings and we haven't told you to change role, just start again. Okay. And just keep going through your feelings until we send you a little message in the chat saying, please change role. Okay. I'm opening the wounds. So, but it's not about what we feel now, but generally, right? It is about what you feel now. It's about now. Yeah. All right. And Chloe, do you want me to go to breakout room 17? Yes, please. Yeah, that would be great. Ja, magst du dazu kommen? Also Vera, I was going to ask you, can you see the chat when you're in the breakout room? the main chat what what did you say can you see the main chat in the breakout room i don't see the whole thing okay, no. the whole conversation okay yeah <sighs> okay Does anybody notice that when you share your feeling, you cannot be wrong? You cannot be wrong about what you're scared about, what you're angry about, right? Yeah. So, so, you know, part of a conflict start with this position, I am right, you're wrong. But when you talk about feeling, that even that concept of right and wrong disappears. Because who can say, Okay, you're scared about this. Okay. <laughs> Who can say that's not true? It's an experience. Could you really feel that you were a little bit angry and a little bit scared and a little bit sad and joyful? Could some of you feel that, the little sensation? Great. That's a sensation. So, for example, I would offer this practice or this experiment 
at a beginning of a meeting, like a team meeting or community meeting where everybody come together. We don't really know what's going on for other people. Maybe you don't know where they are, what happened. Maybe they had a, a bad conversation, you know, or a conversation with their wife or husband in the morning that didn't turn out the way they wanted, or, you know, we don't know what's going on for people. But if we can start a meeting by everybody checking in saying, I feel mad, sad, glad, and scared, then some, somehow, okay, you can see where people are. So I was just, <laughs> hmm, yeah. Yeah. So D Dita was saying, I've been told that I'm wrong about my feelings for most of my life. Mm. Yeah, it's something I know it's not true, but it's embedded in myself and my body. So other people have that, that you think your feelings are wrong? Uh, not exactly, but something that is, uh, some important people tell me that this is only my sub subjective way of reading reality. It's not real completely real let's say oh. yeah. yeah i just i want to say that most of us have been born and raised in what we call modern culture which is the capitalist patriarchal empire that is uh the mainstream culture out there for most of us where we go down in the street and that's the mainstream culture and that culture is has a thought where has a way of relationship to the feeling that says feeling is not okay. So which would end up in a result saying, then you are wrong. If you're feeling then something is wrong with you, you are broken, you have to be fixed, we have to give you pills, you have to go to the hospital to the shrink. So that's the that's the reaction when when you would start feeling feelings in front of other people. And I uh, offer here, and maybe you've had this sensation when you were sharing your four feeling is there are four feelings, anger, sadness, fear, and joy. They are a neutral source of information and energy for your life and your destiny, for your life and your relationship. And they have so much intelligence and, and information and energy for relationship. And one of them is to be able, if you can sense what you're feeling and you've learned to navigate your inner feeling, anger, sadness, fear, and joy, and you know which percentage it is from zero to a hundred percent, you can feel what other people is, is also feeling. And that is, that is compassion. If you can feel what you're feeling and feel what the other person is feeling and be connected, this is compassion. So in this, in this session, in this context of possibility management, in this, what I would call in next cultures, so I think all of you are building what I would call a, a next culture, something that comes after the capitalist patriarchal empire. You can, you can look into the culture you want to build, you want to build, and look at what is the relationship that you want with feelings. And from experience, you might want to have you might want to change your mind. You might want to change your mind. That's what minds are for, okay? That's all, basically the only thing that minds are for, to be changed. And you can say, <laughs> feelings are okay. I, when I'm feeling, I'm alive, instead of I'm broken. When I'm feeling, that means I'm alive. And, and the other person can have this reaction of, if you're feeling you are broken, and you say, hey, you have a culture that says when you're feeling you, you're broken. Well, I have a culture that when I say I'm feeling, I'm alive. How is it going for you over there? Okay, so you don't have to convert people and the other people around you don't have to think the same way, but you can change your mind. So <laughs> if you want, you can, you can even write down in your, in your book right now, you know, at the beginning, I changed my mind about feeling. When I'm feeling, I'm feeling. I'm feeling anger, sadness, fear, and joy, and they have intelligence and energy for my life and relationship. So you give yourself permission to feel. I'm not really reading what's going on in the chat, but I feel really glad if you can use the chat to, uh, if you have a question, 
and and if any of you have any impulse about what is said you know i think there's a huge amount of group intelligence in here so please use that i just so know me you had some question yeah yeah what came up for me was the question can we feel too much as well like can we because i also feel with the conference i'm i'm giving a lot of space to my feelings and i think it has been beautiful and i'm really yeah grateful for it but on the other hand uh I, it's also kind of maybe hindering me in what I need to do kind of, yeah, for my studies. And um, yeah, like also overwhelmed. I feel like a lot of energy is flowing inside of me because I'm triggering a lot, but I don't have all the time to completely dive into what I'm triggering and really work with it. So yeah, this question came up for me, like, can you feel too much? Well, so you're, you're bringing in a, a relationship to feeling that is having feeling is not productive. Does that feel like that? If I feel feeling, I'm not being an efficient little soldier. No, I'm not. And, and so, but that, you know, then you have a conflict of context. Yeah, there's a context, there's a part of you that says, I want to live in a culture where I can feel and I can let that express and then i have a there's another part of me that lives in a culture where i have to study and and studying doesn't include anything about uh inner world and so i think what's happening for you is a, a conflict of context well yeah my well the study is actually about this deep inner work so of course i was going to experience that myself as well as if i'm going to study it um yeah, but it's. I'm well, also if like, it, oh my if God. it is about that, then I would say bring that, you know, bring the I feel mad, sad, glad, and scared into it. Mm. Yeah. Great. If you're studying this, this is perfect. Can I, can I add something? Yeah, go over. yeah, it's the one of the basic assumptions of modern culture is that feelings are not productive. And it's, and it's modern culture is designed for productivity. So feelings would be a hindrance to to that productivity. It, it's it's a, a, des, a part of the design of a capitalist patriarchal colonial empire. So that could be the context that is in conflict, and not necessarily like the content of your course. I want to I want to answer. It's a very interesting question. I never heard heard it before. So is some if someone if someone is feelings is expressed about me. That's Jay writing in the chat. Is it also always right? The great thing is if your feelings are not wrong, they cannot be right. They are neither right nor wrong. They just are. They're this right and wrong is a shadow principle which creates conflict. So I want to try this out. I want to try this out in the, in the next experiment, which is about putting poop on the table. Okay, conflict alchemy is about putting the poop on the table. And I'm sure a lot of you, are very, you have worked on yourself, you have clarity, and you go into a meeting space, or even in this space, or in your family, like especially in your family, and you sit at the table and you're just like, God, those people... They, they have so much poop, they have so much stuff going on, like they need to be, they need to transform and they need to shift and, and everybody else has poop. And then it's like, who else has poop? Okay. <laughs> okay, we all have poop to put on the table. And the great thing is if we can take responsibility for our poop, we can turn it into gold. Okay, so the way we're gonna take responsibility for our poop is with a, Practice call, I have a story about you. The great, the amazing thing about human being is that they look at another human being for less than about two seconds and they already make a story about them. So you have stories about basically everybody in this Zoom chat, like this Zoom room. So the, um, Vera, are you gonna write in the chat the different? Yeah. So there's six steps. You might want to write them down in your beat book. So when you go in breakout rooms, you can go through the sixth step of this practice. And Vera is going to put it on the chat. So 
if, even if you don't get what I'm saying, you'll be in the chat. So yes. it goes like this. You'll go in a breakout room and you'll look at the person that is across from you. And without even knowing what you're going to say, you say, I have a story about you. My story is I feel, and you go into your feelings, you check which, which is the biggest feeling right now. And you say, okay, is it anger, sadness, fear, or joy? Okay, I feel, for example, angry because you wear it, you have a haircut, you have a, so I'm, t I'm, I'm, I'm going to use an example of Joe. Is that okay, Joe, if I use you as an example, as a demonstration? Cool. So, Joe, I have a story about you. My story about you is I feel angry because you have a buzzed haircut. And the buzzed haircut reminds me of the nuns, the Buddhist nuns, which I used to be around a lot. And... And the Buddhist nun, they don't want to be angry. They say anger is attachment. And so I'm angry because I think you don't want to be angry because you have the same bus cut as a nun. My evidence is you have a bus cut. Okay, so that's the third step. Third step is what is your evidence to support your story? The amazing thing is that there's enough evidence in the whole universe to support any story. So you'll make a story and then your mind will be looking for evidence. Oh God, how can, I, how can I prove that my story is right? So you say my evidence for this story is and they will come up. Then the fourth step is that, I mean, we can ask ourselves the question, why do we make stories? Why do we make stories about other people? Because stories... And you, you might have noticed it that before, but if you have a story, you don't get to be with the person across from you. You get to be with your story about them. <laughs> yeah. So there's a purpose about why we make a story. So the purpose is we don't want to be with the person across from us. Okay, why? Why don't we want to be with those people? And if you... We've, so we've done the research of exploring what is the, what's, it, what's behind the story. And what we've noticed is that it's fear. It is the feeling of fear. There's something about that person that we don't know. There is a, you know, there's a black hole. There's a thing that we don't know about them. And instead of being with the unknown, which will bring fear, we make the story so we stop feeling fear because feeling is not allowed. Very clever. So then I'm gonna, so Joe, I'm gonna reveal what is my fear behind my story about you. My fear is that you could be an ally. I'm afraid that you could be like a colleague of mine and that if you don't feel angry, then I don't know how I can be a colleague. So I'm afraid because I don't know how I can be a colleague if you don't feel. Yeah. And maybe it's, maybe the simple thing is I don't know how to be a colleague. So then I would make this story. So then, then I'll never, I can never be a colleague with you. Okay, and that actually, I've already started the fifth step, which is my payoff and benefit. And then you have to look into your shadow world about why you're making up a whole story to create disconnection. Why would you make up a whole story to create disconnection? And so with Joe is, you know, if I look into my payoff and my benefit, then my, my shadow world will tell me, it's like, my, my payoff is like, if I have this story, then I don't have to put effort and I can keep this story of I'm a lone wolf fighter. Like I'm, a, I'm doing it all by myself and nobody's there and I don't have colleagues. And that would be part of my, my underworld of thinking that I'm alone in this work. 
Great. And then the, the sixth step, like uh, Vera has put, is I want to ask you, Joe, what do you think or feel about my story? Would you, would you answer now? Um, yeah, so I think your story um, has some truth in it. I do find it hard to express my anger. Um, and um, so your story has been quite helpful in some way in helping me kind of recognize that around myself. But I also think um, that, or, f or perhaps I also feel that um, your story might prevent us kind of working together in the future. So Joe, can I give you a little coaching? Yeah, yeah. So would you, after the word feel, would you put anger, scared, sad, or, or glad? Yeah. So you feel? Yeah, uh, yeah I feel sad um, when, when you talked about um, your story about me because, yeah. So I, I felt some sadness because I felt it, um, it blocked our connection. Yeah. Thank you. And I, yeah. for me, I just want to say that it was when you say, I feel that you blocked my connection and the difference between I feel sad that you blocked my connection. And then I could be, ah, oh, yeah, I get it that how that would create disconnection. But with the, the moment you added the feeling then I could hear you better. Yeah, thank you. Vera, you want to add something? Yeah, it's uh, so the, there's even though as you have you seen uh, Anne Chloe started, she already recognized that it was the fear behind her story. When you do this uh, this practice to really to really go through the steps, because sometimes so the the fear that uh, that starts. Uh, us like starts the mechanism of story making it comes from this fear of unknown that then reveals more things about ourselves so you might not be feeling like the the, the forefront feeling might not be fear you you can feel uh, something else for the per with the person in front of you okay so just go through the steps see what you feel and then and then you can see what is the fear behind that feeling. And then the, that the last, the last step is like, it's your reality check. So what do you think and feel about the story after you've revealed yourself and how, what's going on inside you, your poop, you're putting your poop on the table, then you get to get a reality check from the other person. So this is conflict alchemy in one practice. So Christina had the question for step two, do you mention one feeling or all? So I would say it might be one, it might be two, it might be more. Okay. But you can do one. That's enough. Yeah. Oh, and Anna and Telsh said, I did not really get the benefit. What is the story? Well, the benefit, it's a, okay. The benefit is a shadow principle. It's a shadow purpose. It's an unconscious purpose and having a story that I'm doing it on my own. And basically I don't need anybody else is coming from this unconscious purpose yeah it's mm, when i could be building a team that would be more of a conscious purpose and yeah you you get it okay so you will have to look into your underworld mm -hmm. so the joy okay jay the joy would be from like for the step two yeah and and even even if you if you feel joy step Four is still fear. So check it out. It might be amazing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so the way we'll do it, we'll break you up in, in rooms and you'll have about five and a half minutes to go through the six steps. Okay. And then you switch roles. I'll tell you, you just switch roles. We'll bring you back everybody here after the second person has done this story and break you back up. Okay, so you get to do this with two different people to have the experience. And Anna and Tosh, I'll leave you in the same breakout room and you can do it as many times as possible. It's great practice. Okay. And 
Can you put me with someone that talks Portuguese? Uh, is that Elena asking? Me, me, me. Yes. Okay. Uh, Elena, I'm going to put you with Joana then. Thank you, because this is difficult. <laughs> okay. So I need to find you. There's quite a few people here. Elena, great. Okay, Elena, you with Joanna, and then uh, I'm I'm sorry. I need to do this again because people need, some people need to be alone in a breakout room. So yeah, have you? have you written down the the steps because as soon as you go to the breakout rooms the group chat it disappears so just to make sure ah, yeah. I, have it. I, do that. I think some i think there might be a change with that the group chat now stays with you mm. but, but check, double check <laughs> yeah i didn't i didn't get it from the last time but maybe it's my zoom so can you repeat Can how much copy the group chat and paste it into the private chat? Uh, yeah, you, you can do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm better. Uh, the sixth <laughs> stage is what the other person think about my story or me about myself. Yeah. This is you're asking the other person. So it, every step is a dialogue. Is you saying this? Yes. So the last one is you asking the other person, what do you feel and think about the story? Okay. Okay, I think we're all good. I'm sending you out. And Vera also. Grace, can you hear me? Okay, would you start? Okay, um, I have a story about you. I have a story about you. <laughs> um, my story is I feel... Uh, yeah, it's kind of like when they're bits of i feel it might help you if you look at look at me for a second okay. and just yeah. check in your heart what is which feeling comes first um i feel fear um about you mm -hmm. uh um, not being able to understand how I'm, uh, not being able to understand my version of the, my experience. Okay. Is that en enough or should I? Yeah, no, that's good. Um, my evidence for this is, my evidence for this story is um, noticing that when uh, you've been talking, it's been quite fast on some level. <laughs> um, and my fear behind this is that I can't keep up uh, or that I'll miss something and then get it wrong. Maybe. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just, I want to pause you for a second. Rachel, yeah. can I do something? Can I do anything for you? I'm so sorry to interrupt you. Um, 
Uh, the other lady I'm with in the breakout room can't hear me. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, this is working. Right. So my proposal is if you can go back in your breakout room and then you can even write it. You can write your yeah. story. Yeah. Okay. Would you try that? Yeah, sure. Sorry, okay. girls. Yeah. No problem. I think if you click, you can you go on your breakout room? You know how to do that? I don't know how to go back in. I've, I think there's a maybe at the bottom of the oh yeah the bar there's go, yeah okay see you um, I'm mean, aware you might have to send a message at some point so <laughs> yeah yeah you have a couple more minutes multi you're multitasking from the front <sighs> um so my fear behind yeah my fear behind this was um oh you were going to give me some feedback sorry no that was it I was oh. It was Rachel. Okay. Um, my fear behind this was that I might not get it right or I might not keep up. Uh, and I think there was some fear around looking out for other people. Of like, oh, is this, but actually it was all, actually it came back to me. <laughs> um, my payoff for making and holding this story. Um, yeah, I suppose it feels like, oh, I don't, uh, oh, is my idea that I'm always being criti uh, critiqued. Um, so there's something around that, like if, mm. um, without it being vocalized somehow. And, and then you could check what do you do with it then if you think when you have the sensation or you create the story that you're critique you have a critique critique mm -hmm. then what happens what um my then i can worry about what other people are doing rather than focusing on what i can offer in that moment or be with myself in the moment mm. Um, which kind of comes back to my fear of uh, needing to check what's going on around me rather than being present in order to stay safe. Uh, maybe. Yeah, does that? I don't know. This is your story. <laughs> <laughs> this is my story. <laughs> um, Great. So what do you think and feel about my story? I feel sad. And I think I feel every, also angry and scared. Because because then I don't, uh, how do you say? It's a common fear that people have with me that I judge them or I'm superior or I'm if I I might not wait for quote unquote the, the slow people and so and I yeah I feel sad about that because I it's I don't think it's my intention I I wanted to say that what I think is that I get really excited about what I deliver and this is like a scratch of the surface of the work that I do and I, I would want to give you about 100 times more. And so the speed of the speaking is the excitement and the, okay, let's, let's keep moving. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I um, didn't, yeah, go ahead. Do you need to message people? Go for it. Yeah. Oh, it was just funny because uh, some of my fear is not letting myself get excited, like controlling my joy uh, and so maybe there's something in that critique in me of like uh oh did you pause while she was sending yeah cool okay okay let me do this with you it's leon leon i have a story about you and my story is that i feel 
scared and also sad and also angry that you have this you have built in you this survival strategy of what i call giving your center away where what other people think of you is takes priority about what you think of yourself or what's going on for you and that you have this really amazing detector about what people need what they expect what what you can do for them even before they know and then you give it to them before they even know they knew it and i part of my sadness is that um, it's a very common survival strategy and it could be that a lot that some people around you are around you because you fulfill their need and not because they love you i'm not saying everybody i'm saying maybe some people my evidence is the way you told me the story before it was you were afraid of what i was thinking about you and if you were too slow and if i was criticizing you so that gives me a big hint of um yeah that you were giving your center away to me and also energetically i can i can feel it because i've i was a pro at that survival strategy for 25 years and i've learned to keep my center and so i have a detector for other people's giving away center strategy and my fear behind my story and i think this is an emotional fear and it sort of goes with my payoff is a fear that it is so ingrained in our in modern culture that women give their scent away and a lot to men or to authority figure and that's how we've been raised and that's my fear is that i've been raised that way and the women around me are being raised that way and my sisters have been raised that way and my mom raised us that way and i this is a really deep fear that uh, how do we change that i think my fear is so it's in a way my fear is not really about you it's about more like a like about a lot of women mm. and my payoff for my story mm well if i hold on to that story my payoff is then i don't i leave a, a sister woman in a, a patriarchal culture and my payoff then is i'm out and i'm going to leave them in and i'm in a better place and they're in so if i just hold on to that story and not say anything then that's that's the result of what i'm creating does that make sense the last part Yes, I might have. Uh, can you say it one more time? In a, yeah. My my shadow purpose, or like my benefit, if I if I had that story about you and I and I kept it, and I was holding on to this story and I was interacting with you without telling you my story, and just just interacting with you with the story in the middle, my benefit would is that then I would leave you keep giving your center away and i would i would have trained myself and i would leave you you know i would leave you giving your center away to men or to authority and then your life is about other people and i would leave you there and i would be somewhere else and that's that would be my shadow of i made it but i don't care and i don't care about others what do you think and feel about my story mm. Um yeah that last bit kind of opened it up into <laughs> sorry it doesn't look right. um mm -hmm. I feel I felt scared when um when it felt like fact and I felt scared uh when it because I felt vulnerable um I felt feel or maybe actually I felt a bit angry with the like it feeling a bit like fact uh, and wanting it to hold multiple truths rather than feeling like it was a stake in the ground. Um, and I feel I feel joy 
about um, the possibility opening up of like that bit of me not holding my center really resonated and uh, that that's I know I'm not alone on that and knowing that actually there's more and more spaces uh, and intention to shift that for myself and for other people mm. um, I'm going to send a message, but yeah, keep, I, I would listen to the last thing you want to say. Um, and I feel, I feel fear, but I'm just sitting with it around. Um, I can feel the old me bit of uh, not getting it right or not being good enough. And I'm just, it's there and I just sit with it. <laughs> Um, Are you, and actually, it, yeah. I feel like I, it's a joy in befriending it. So thank you so much. Marianne. Yeah. And Chloe. Chloe and Chloe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Hello. Hi. You did. It's very tough. Uh, facilitating and being a participant. It's... <laughs> In my experience, and you might, you might have lots of the the coronavirus has given me a lot of practice on <laughs> on the online <laughs> online doing both. Yeah, yeah, massive lots of dancing. The chat was still visible because oh, no new chat would come in. Okay. Yes. We yes, couldn't see new messages from you. Hi, Benita. Hola, Kalu. Hola. Okay, there are people coming in and out. Let's see. Okay, I'm I'm gonna break you out in new rooms. Oh my god! Yeah, and you're gonna we're gonna do this exercise one more time. So just so you can really have a feel for the power of it and practice it, and so bring it into your communities. I'm not. This is really a life changing uh, practice. Okay. And before you send us yes. out into groups, I have yes. a question. Um, um, on a different um, methodology, I used to practice this. And a little bit, the idea was to review the prejudice that we might have about someone else based on our own stories. Is that? Vera, yeah, if you have something, Vera, just go ahead. Um, it's. It's to reveal the, our, our unconscious parts. And they could be prejudices. They could just be parts that we've learned, like strategies or habits or, or beliefs that don't even come from us. It comes from um, the, the culture that we grew up with or the family context or the religion. So there, there, there are conclusions or assumptions habits or behaviors that um that form um mm -hmm. that form part of what what i call what we call impossibility management your box mm -hmm. so this is where you're revealing parts of of like your unconscious you're revealing parts of like the the things that the different parts of you that are at play if you don't if you're not aware of them you don't have choice over them so this process makes the underworld, like the poop that is hidden, makes the background conversation to the forefront. It says what's really, like what's behind, what's going on. So when it's revealed, you can do something about it. You can, you can look and see, ah, wait, there is a part of me that has this assumption or belief. And that could be a prejudice. It's, it's a story. And like what Aunt Chloe said, a story, you just like the feelings, you know, so you don't have to be true or untrue. It's a, it's a story. 
but a story has consequences. You know, like, like what you saw, that your story had a consequence about how you relate, how you, how you, how you, relate, how you relate. Yeah. Yeah. Does, does this answer? Does this answer? Question? Yes, question. perfectly. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I'm breaking you up back in groups. And Ellen, Ellen uh, McCourt, well, yeah, would you stay with me and we'll do it in the main room? I'm Portuguese as well, so I can I can do it with Elena. I, I went with I went with João, not with um, I don't remember the girl yeah. that you were yeah. saying before. It, so a pause, pause. So I'm talking to another Ellen, like uh, uh, Ellen McCord. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, Ellen McCord. Would you you're gonna have a, a something? Somebody is gonna yeah ask you to break, join the breakout room, and you say no, and you stay here. Super. Okay, let's go. Okay, there's a lot of people who haven't joined. So, Jake. I didn't get an invitation. Yeah, I'm gonna move you. I'm gonna move okay. you, I think. Did you get I'm it? A no? oh, yes, I did, thank okay. you. Okay, and Deb. I, yes? I just came back because there was no one there in the room. Okay, well, this is our team. This is the team, so. <laughs> um, I don't want to be recorded in this. Okay. So you know what, Deb, would you go back into room 25 and then uh, Elena will partner you up with, with Deb, okay? And then you can do it in a breakout Great. room. Great. Great. Okay. Here you go. You can click on breakout room. If you click on, there's a little icon, break, breakout room. And, and you can I'm say, I'm not seeing it. Yeah, nobody I'm was not in like it. Room, I'm not so. like it did before. Gary's back. The breakout rooms. We're on connection, not just being on the super, superficial um, connection. So I felt from superficial could go really deep very easily. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and yeah, Richard. Yeah, I would. Um, I learned a similar model to this, or we learned in the past. Um, the last two steps were not in it, and the in exchange was a step which was my wish is. Um, and I, I wondered what you felt. I, I really, I really enjoyed this a lot. That it really brings it back to uh, to me and a reflection on me. But I, I'm interested what you what you feel about this step of instead of my benefit and my a reality check mm -hmm. for me to say my wish to the person what i what i uh i think it's a it's an interesting step we would add it we that would be a different exercise that we do that which would be called negotiating intimacy i have this and this and what i would what i want you know so it's a little bit from different from wish and it's very different from need it's what i want is and the question would be, and what do you want? And how do we creatively collaborate so we both get what we want? So that's the, the direction we would go in. So, you know, even in that, I have a story about you, you can add step seven. You can go through those six steps and then at, at the end said, and my wish. And that would be a totally cool exercise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, Deb, I'm... Maybe but before that, Vanita, oh, Vanita had been yeah. on the hand. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Vera. Yes. So uh, what I experienced that whether I'm telling a story about the other person or I'm listening to what the other person is telling me about me, it's all my 
my internal story about myself and the other person that's going on. Uh, like even when I'm listening, when the other person is telling me the story about me, how I perceive that story is also my story about myself. Am I being clear? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And definitely when I'm talking about the other person, that is definitely my story. So it's, it's just my story in both the situations. Yeah, what this process does is it, it, it creates a, a, the conditions for you to take responsibility for the stories that you create, either about yourself or about the other person. That's why the last two steps are very different and I also don't see it in other processes because it's about taking responsibility. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. I think, so just one more person, Sarah, and then um, we'll move on. We have some other cool stuff to show you or to do yeah. with you. Yeah. Sarah, go ahead. One of the two things, two benefits I, I noticed for myself, um, one, one is that um, I often have intuition about situations and, and I don't know if I'm reading the energy right from another person. And this is a really good way for me to, 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 to sort of hone my, like, is, where is my intuition on track? And where is it, is it off track? And, um, and also, um, and, 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 and get, maybe even get better over time at reading energy. Um, and then a second thing is just uh, that, um, that hearing, I, hearing how, like my story, the story that I'm telling has has hurt has hurt others or limited relationships. Just feels like a really uh, a, re a really awesome invitation to be able to to begin to heal that um, to heal the divides um, that 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 my stories, uh, especially about certain quote certain quote unquote types of people, have been creating. So anyway, thanks. Yeah, thank you, sir. Yeah, I was gonna, you can do this, this I have a story process, we call it I have a story process. Uh, you can do this with people who don't do this work, who don't do this work at all, because it's about you say, I have a story, and my fear is and my feeling is. And so it's a great, it's an amazing tool to do this with basically anybody, and to experiment about what's the result. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in, in this process, when, when you realize that like the fears that you have, the story that you have about yourself, that you were revealing parts of yourself, what was happening was that you were, you were feeling that fear and you were, hitting, you were hitting the edge of your box. So you were hitting the edge of your box. We call it, again, to just to explain, the box is the, that set of, of beliefs, of, of, of behaviors, of habits, or conclusions. So when, when a, a real intimacy comes, when, when actual authentic connection is, is possible, most people feel that they're at the edge of their box, that at edge of their comfort zone. So one really helpful, that I found really helpful distinction to have is that you are not your box. Everyone has a box. It's like a filter to interact with the world. And, and it's, it's like these things of, uh, do I cut the butter? It's made of these little behaviors. I cut the butter. No, I spread the butter. Or I put the toilet paper in one way or the other way. Uh, or I sleep on my side. It was, it, all of these behaviors that make us like our likes and our dislikes, they're just how our box is formed. And so if you have a box and you are not your box, that means that when you're in conflict with someone, you are not actually in conflict with that person. It's your box that is in conflict with that box. And, and because your box is just a, a set of programming. And, and when it comes to another box that has a different set of programming, so basically the boxes that are similar to you you call it your friends. 
<laughs> that, that get the same things, that watch the same shows. And when you find another box that is different, then you might call them your enemies or, or other types of people. And so the invitation is that there's, there's more, like you are not your box. And when you get into conversation, when the, when the box gets in contact with another box, it can have a type of reaction. So we're, we're, we're going to go to a, a different uh, practice that you guys are gonna practice that could be really helpful to have the different types of reaction, the emotional reactivity that you can have when facing with another person. So for that, you know, we were talking about the feelings. There's four feelings, anger, sadness, fear, and joy. When we also have emotions and emotions feel exactly the same as feelings, but there's, there's a difference. The, the emotions last longer than three, five minutes and feelings are from the present moment. So feelings are of the right now and emotions is something usually from the past, or um, from a past experience, from could be feeling from, from your culture, from your religion, from your family. There's generational and ancestral feelings. You know, there's, there's war between families where the, the children grow up hating the other, you know, having strong feelings about that family. Those are not even theirs, it's from their family. So when you have an, an emotional experience that lasts longer than five minutes, you are experiencing an emotion and emotions and feelings have different purposes. A feeling is to deal with things, the things that are happening around you. So anger for making a boundary or, or, or running to get a, a bus when you need to some action uh, or, or sadness to, to grieve something that's happening or to connect to someone is emotions are not for dealing with things. Emotions are for healing things. So it's good to know when you have an emotion that there's something that has not been totally integrated and heard because every communication will persist until it's heard. So sometimes who has, you know, had an interaction with a person and then five minutes later, half an hour later, one hour later, still was, still had the same feeling still experience the same. Okay, that is an emotion. So some of the emotional reactions that you're gonna have, that, that you have in relationship to other people will come from emotions. Those, so there are different kinds of reactivities, basically. The, the emotions that come from the past, they come from, um, from things that happened when, you know, like a long time ago that they weren't properly healed or that they haven't been seen. So if you have an emotion, that's what you do. You can write it down and ask a person, um, a possibility manager coach or, or other people that do this kind of work, the emotional healing processes to, uh, to take you through a process so that you can um, recover that energy that you've been holding for so long. That means that you are uh, in an emotional reactivity. Okay. There are the emotional reactivity that is called a button. A button is when your box gets reactive. That thing that I was saying, uh, I wash the dishes right after one person washes the dishes right after um, making food. The other person washes the dishes way after um, or after having dinner and they one prefers their thing and the other one has their preference and it's basically a button a button is something that whatever it gets pressed your box will react in the same exact way you press the button it reacts the same way you press the same button it reacts the same way <laughs> so true yeah so we call that a button and it's part of your box your survival strategy so that uh, that you've learned to, to develop so that you can survive. That's, that's your button. So what you can do is to, to figure out, to notice yourself, to practice noticing, and to, to figure out, you, you 
do non-judgmental self-observation and you notice how you react when you react in the same ways. And then you can find where the button is and again, get someone to help you go through emotional healing process where the, what happened when you created that survival strategy. Okay. Vera, can I interrupt you? Go for it. I just see we have about 15 minutes. And um, so Vinita asked this question in the chat where we want to go next is what happens when you have a conflict, even a subtle conflict with somebody. And so either you notice that you have an emotional reaction that Vera was talking about, or you notice that they're having an emotional reaction, that whatever they're feeling actually has nothing to do with you. It's just a reminiscent of the past. So what we want to practice for about 10 minutes and then we'll bring you back up five minutes before the end is called, it's a technology that changes, it's a conflict alchemic technology called meta conversation. So it is a conversation about the conversation. So most people are having a linear conversation. Who, was it, who washes the dishes? Is it me or is it you? Having a meta conversation in is what is the purpose of our conversation? What do we want to achieve with this conversation? Where are we going? Or how do you want this conversation to happen? So we'll practice that in groups of three and we'll, it will be kind of fast. Um, you'll have about two and a half minutes to practice. But you can think of somebody that you're having, you're having a tough time having fruitful or nourishing conversation with and you're going to ask so the first person start the second person will role play will role play this person and then the third person is a coach okay so the third person you are the coach and you just give possibilities and uh, your impression on the possibility manager okay the person who's practicing having meta conversation so the way it's going to go is the, the possibility manager practicing a meta conversation will say hello and the other person will say, again, you didn't, you didn't wash the dishes or you didn't um, put, up, put away your clothes or you didn't finish the project in time. Or, so you can give them a hint about who they are, if they're a colleague or a family or a friend. And you as the possibility manager, you'll have about two minutes to practice having a conversation about the conversation. saying. For example, what is your purpose when you, when you ask me this? What would you like to create with me when you tell me I didn't wash the dishes? Or would you make me another offer because that offer is really not exciting? When you tell me I didn't do the dishes, it's really not nourishing or exciting. Would you tell me in a different, would you make me another offer that will excite me? Okay, so it's a new skill. Okay, but it's a, about having a conversation about the conversation. After two minutes, I will say shift the constellation and then shift again. And then you get to play all three roles possibility manager, role play, and coach. Yeah? I'm not clear how to do this. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe you, you get to be the role play first, then, Ellen. Okay, then you can see how the coach and possibility manager do this it's a new skill it's new territory we have not been taught in school how to have a conversation about our conversation how to create a different kind of intimacy how to create a different kind of relationship this is all this is all a meta conversation and you'll just try it and you probably the first time you won't succeed and then you'll get coaching and you'll just try it again the role play you just role play. So, okay, the role player, you are the person, so the possibility manager tells you, you are my father, you are my sister, you are my colleague. And so, and you become this person. So you talk as, you talk as the role player, okay? You talk as the father and the colleague, whatever they would say. And then the coach, you just, <clears throat> It's really, it's easier to be a third person in the conversation and you can see more possibilities. So okay, the coach, you see more possibilities and you say, hey, could, you could try this. Okay, that's the role of the coach. 
Could you exemplify between you and Vera, please? This helps. Okay. So Vera, yeah. would who would you want to talk to? I want to talk <coughs> with my mother. Okay. So I'm I'm Vera, your mother, and her name is. Her name is, is Fernanda. Fernanda. I am Fernanda. Hi. Hi, mom. Hi, uh, Vera. I, you, you took the car again without asking. Yeah, you, I took the car without asking. Yes, and I told you, I, <coughs> I don't, you know, I don't, want to, I don't want you to take the car without asking. And you had told me before that, that, I, need, uh, that I couldn't take the car without asking. Um, well, I, I really needed the car, so I, I, I had to really take it. I'm, I'm really sorry. Okay, let's, I would propose that we, we do it. So, no, you, you, you were doing the meta conversation there. Yeah, I know. I, know. I, I, I was, I was going to start doing the meta conversation, and then I thought, where's my coach to give me a beat? Okay. Yeah. So there's no coach. So just go ahead and give okay. do an example of a meta conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It sounds, it sounds like you are, um, you're feeling something. Yeah. I'm, I feel angry. You feel angry. Yeah. I'm, like, because I needed the car and I didn't know where the car was. You feel angry because you needed the car and you didn't know where the car was. Yeah. What, what is important to you right now? I wanted, I wanted to do, go and do something with you. And then you've gone and you had the car. You wanted to do something with me. And I just went away with the car. Yeah, and I had this plan and I thought we could have fun together now that you're in Lisbon. So I hear my, that. Yeah, my coaching Vera would be, okay, could you ask me, could you make that offer in a different way? That would be a meta conversation. Okay. Yeah. Would could you, you make me? me, yeah. Would you, I heard that you wanted to have fun with me now that I'm in Lisbon. Could you make me that offer in a different way? You mean you want me to invite you again? Just, I, I heard now that you, that you, it's clear that, it's clear to me now that you, you really wanted to spend time with me and have fun. Yeah. What, what things would you like to do with me? Could you invite me for that? Yeah, I can. Well, yeah, actually, I wanted to go to the beach with you. I thought we could have a girls' day at the beach. So I was thinking maybe this afternoon, but we now it's too late. So maybe we could go tomorrow to the beach together. That's actually what I wanted to tell you. Okay, you want to tell me that you want, you're inviting me to the beach tomorrow. Yes. Yeah, yeah I'd love to. I really love to. That's an example of meta conversation. Um, I don't know, there's seven minutes left. I would like to try it, to do just one try, okay? We go in a group, there's one person, a possibility manager, one the role player, like I was the mom of Vera, and then you get the coach that can give ideas. We just do one, one constellation so you get to only be one role but you get to see how it goes and you can practice that okay i think everybody's in the breakout room also can i the... can i ask a question first midi yeah um there's, there's a thread in the box which is actually speaking to the question of the box if you're dealing with very emotionally charged or mentally ill people yeah and i feel that that's an important question to have a response to maybe if not here then after the event 
but the, I would like to hear a response to it. Please. Yeah, great. I think, I think it's an important question. I really want to practice this skill because it's such a fun and a, like useful technology. And I would say if we stay afterwards, people who want to hear answer to that question, we can stay afterwards and, and sort of have a conversation about that. Does that work, Midi? It doesn't work for me because I have to go uh, for an 11 o'clock session. Okay. Um, but maybe it can be somehow relayed through the group. We'll, we'll record it. We'll record it and, and post it. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, Thank you. I'm sending you out. Ja, ich dachte auch. <lacht> Hallo. Oh my god. And uh, whoever I was with, thank you. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, beautiful people. I, this last exercise was really fast and and it's really cool. So I wanted to show you, show it to you anyway. Um, I know some people have to go. You have other workshops and other cool stuff to go to. I feel glad about that. Have fun. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for, yeah, indulging with our craziness. <laughs> Thank you. Ciao. And I, I'm very nice. Staying, are we staying around to deal with the question that has yes. been asked? Yes. Okay. Yes, good. yes, yes. Good. I'm just saying goodbye to people who need to go. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I have a question. Okay, just a second. I'm just, uh, there was this question. How, how big is your question? Big. Maria. Maria's question? Yeah. Um, it's medium sized. <laughs> okay, is it possible? Can we take the medium sized one first? And then the other one might be a bigger size. Is that okay? Okay, okay, Maria, shoot. Well, the, the small part of my question is, is there a website with possibilities that we could use for exploring meta conversation? There's a website called Meta Conversation and there's about one image on it. So, but <laughs> if you kick our ass, <laughs> we'll make a list of examples of what you can say to create a meta conversation. So just okay. write me a message or an email and I'll, I'll, I'll get on it. Yeah, and we'll be okay. sharing the further resources and websites in an email after the recording, after today. Okay, okay I'll go with the small version then. Okay, thank, thank you. you, Maria. So would somebody want to uh, rephrase the question about, there was about the box and mental illness? Mm. Uh, I posted it, and I think it goes in different directions. It okay. goes first on if you are a person suffering from PTSD or having gone through immediate conflict shock, uh, violence, uh, whichever way it goes, uh, how do you engage in these practices? And as a facilitator, how can you actually um, como, uh, create a path? Sorry. Yeah, create a path. Um, create a path. And if you are the person talking to someone who's in that situation, my mother, for example, she has a mental, unattended mental illness mm. that she does not wish to, and she does not realize that she needs, uh, or that she would be better off if we were dealing with one and not four, uh, when we're having a conversation with her. 
so how do you how do you put this in practice yeah uh without again playing out a story from box to box uh when one of the yeah persons that you're talking to is actually mainly box yeah because there's there's the main access the only access there is is box yeah yeah i mean i want to say one thing that i've never thought of before but actually i found interesting is that most of what we call mental heal illness is actually emotion mm -hmm. which are when we work in five bodies those are found in two different bodies mental is intellectual it's our thoughts and ideas and opinion and emotion is our feeling in our heart so feeling and emotion in our heart that's our emotional body so it seems to me and i'm not a doctor and i'm not a professional and i so i what i'm i say is not uh, i don't say that as a medical professional but most that most mental illness are actually emotion that have been suppressed and suppressed and suppressed that the person actually cannot have other space than those emotion i think that's so that's they they can only be their emotion because that has been so violent or so uh, traumatic or that that is the only thing that was that is the main thing main thing that we can interact with what we've noticed is we have people who came with uh, being bipolar or borderline, or you mentioned PTSD, and a lot has to do with emotion. And so when there's a safe space where they can start going really slowly, step by step into the tremendous fear that they felt when the trauma happened, the tremendous sadness and anger, mostly those three, Sometimes there's some joy also when they can start feeling them and letting them go through their body instead of being in freeze in their, in their physical, emotional, energetic body, then the, the box uh, crystallization can start to relax. But so, yeah, so yes. And as a child, like you are the daughter of your mother, your parents are not on your bench. Your parents are not a job on your bench. So I'm saying that, you know, because you, you mentioned that, uh, Tania, but I'm saying that for everybody, that we think we might be able to fix our parents or make them more comfortable or, um, and I, I don't know if that's the case for you. I've just met a lot of people for that. That was the case for them. Uh, and, and to realize that actually there's, there's thousands and thousands of people out there waiting for mm -hmm. us to, instead of putting our energy in our ancestral lineage, to turn the other way and, and look there. So this is more of a general conversation. Yeah. Do you, do you have something? I more, how do you, like, if, now that we did the role play, you know, yeah. when you engage in a situation, in a lockdown, quite literally, an emotional lockdown with a person who's not, um in full use of whatever neurological yes. brain space yeah. uh, to engage yeah, I, have, I mean we're talking about medical conditions not necessarily uh psycho emotional conditions but just you know your brain parts of your brain shut down or they shift and, and then it creates an entire different como, pattern yeah uh, yes i'm not saying this that the emotional emotions don't exist or that you know mental illness is not a social construct as much as there are people who after undergoing whatever situation yes. their brains shift yes yes they stop functioning the same way that uh, uh, so I, in this case yeah really, i have an how experiment you, for you uh how do you talk to the box how do you like if the box is locked in a perception that can't really move away from that perception because there's not there's not enough zzz, no synapses to and there's all the emotional load and there's all the how do you actually uh i i have an experiment for you mm -hmm. okay and then i i guess a couple other people might have some ideas but i have an experiment that you you get really the concept of the like the 
the distinction of the box. What you can do is click your clicker and shrink your box into a 10 mm -hmm. centimeter cube on the palm of your hand. You have to keep your palm up. So you can do this right now. Put, put your palm up if you want. Yeah. And sh click your clicker and shrink your box into this 10 centimeter cube. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you click your clicker? No. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. You have to do that. You have to do that. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. yeah. And then your, you know, um, psychological construct, your, your survival strategy is in this box. Your mom still has her box all around her. But now your being is free to connect through her box with her being. So you can do this with anybody here. If you want, you put your box there. That's mm -hmm. your stories and your thoughts and your opinion and your conclusion and expectation. All of that is here. It's not in between. And then you connect through their box into their being, and then the experience is to enjoy a being-to-being -being connection, no matter what they say. No mm -hmm. matter what they say, you are not hooked because your box is here. So your box will start freak out saying, but she cannot say this, and she's attacking me, and her, she's, what is going on with her, whatever. Your box will be freaking out here, but you are there <laughs> and saying, She's just this wonderful person who gave birth to me, cared for me, looked after me. And, you know, she's going on. It's not that you're not interested in what she's saying, but the thing that's important is the being-to-being -being connection. Yeah. Yeah. This is cool. You, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. Can I comment on a couple of those things? I'm sorry. Wait, so I think Ellen had something to say first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then and then Sarah and then you, Jake. Yeah? Okay, okay thank you. Yeah, um, I my mother, Tanya, you and I may have had the same mother. Um, <laughs> one of the things one of the things that I would do and, and the last time I saw her and spent several days with her was right before she took her own life. Uh, it was like three months before she took her own life. So she was in a very, very severe state. One of the things that I did was, and I love this image. This, okay, this is really helpful. <laughs> um, but one of the things that I did was I listened for what she was expressing in the way of emotion. And all I said back was, you sound sad. You sound angry. Those, you know, just gently kindly not engaging at all in any of the attack or any of the whatever was coming up but i would just say i would just say you sound and then fill in one of those four emotions and allow that and what was fascinating to me is that she would immediately go in and examine whether she was those emotions so it actually quieted and calmed her mm, thank you Cool. Yeah, Sarah, go. Um, one of the connections that between this work and what possibility management is talking about is a physiological um, connection about um, there's a survival paradigm that's being researched called the defense cascade, which is just how we how human beings. Uh, the theory is that human beings defend ourselves. Um, from um, and, and 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 that intense emotions come out of and can be explained by those things. And if you look carefully at the defense cascade, you can pretty much get every symptom um, or the implications of every symptom that are in the DSM-4. If you look carefully at what that cascade is doing and how people are are doing that, and and the the cool thing that I found for myself is that once I look at this stuff as survival strategies. In other words, ways I'm ways people are defending boxes in incredibly intense ways. Um, it doesn't matter how intense it, it is. I, if I look at it as a survival strategy, my my challenge is always the same thing. Because if if I'm trying to survive or someone else is trying to survive, the reason I'm trying to survive is because I feel threatened. And so the answer for decreasing the intensity of the emotions is to, to do whatever I can to help someone else or myself feel safe. 
And one of the coolest things about the, the listening that Anna Chloe was just describing is that one of the biggest resources we have as human beings biologically and physiologically to help each other feel safe is our relationships. And in, and, and in, and in particular relationships that allow each other to, that, that don't scare each other, that allow each other to be who we are in respectful ways that actually brings up oxytocin, which makes us feel bonded. It's like the mother breastfeeding hormone thing that makes us all bond together. And if I, if I care about your, your needs as much as I care about my own, that naturally comes up and you and I feel bonded. And so the, the, there's a physiological component to all of this that um, can be extremely helpful and we don't have to pathologize each other, which then scares, at least when somebody pathologizes me for my emotions, I feel more scared. And so it's less, uh, my emotions go up and my intensity goes up rather than down, which is less likely to make me able to communicate with you. Thank you. Yeah, Jake. Um, yeah, I was gonna add that it's, you know, a couple of questions, it's kind of all tied together. Someone was asking, how, how do you do these processes with someone who's in a really intense emotional place of an intense emotional trigger? Um, and then how also in people who have got some sort of, you know, my grandmother's got bipolar and the only times that that matters as a thing is when it triggers some sort of intense emotional reaction in her. And I would say that actually these tools are what enable me to have connection with her. Um, I'd say most of my cousins, they either, they just go numb or they just nod and smile. Well, it's basically them going numb. And generally the family falls apart from my granddad. Everyone falls into one or two categories. They go numb and nod and smile or they get totally triggered and they take it really personally and it, it causes drama. I would say my work with these tools is what enables me to have a different relationship with her because I get to sit there and just, as people here have said, like go, oh, wow, this sounds like it's really upsetting you. And I go down the rabbit hole with her. But because I've got my box in my hand, it's not about me. My box is freaking out and I'm just going, wow, like she's really triggered by some of this stuff. Wow, she must walk around holding this all the time. And it's like, wow, this must really be hard for her. And I go down that rabbit hole and at some point she gets to the end. And then normally an hour later, she's there, found me and is like, I'm so sorry. That was so inappropriate. And I'm like, no, that's not what this is about. I have to quickly get my box back into my hand <laughs> before my box comes back into it. And I'm like, it's the same. And then I've got just got to remember to meet her in that moment where she's going, what just happened? I meet her from the same place, a box in my hand, this isn't right, this isn't wrong, this is just another thing, she's just gone the other way, and I'm like, hey, I love you, and I'm like, I dis, you know, I disagreed with some of what you wanted to say, I being my box, and I also know that's just sometimes where you go, and I love you for that. On the other side, I have had PTSD, and was stuck in that, and lost in that, and it was through having people my partner at the time doing this sort of communication with me of like you seem to have a real hard time feeling at the moment like you seem to really be struggling to feel things in a way that historically i knew you could feel in these situations or you seem to be exploding at a certain point in a way that is unfamiliar to me and it's like taking it to this meta level got me to start thinking and going oh maybe i am and then at some point, it was that that enabled me to get to the point of something's up. Something's really not good. Something's not right. Like something is off in how this, I'm dealing with something here. Something's blocking me. What mm -hmm. could it be? And it enabled, that's what enabled me to go down. And then there were other processes that I could go into that supported me to heal that. And I could go into that emotion that was filling me up and stopping me feeling small things. Thank you. Mm. I, I'd like to add something. Is it, I don't know who's in the next queue to... I think that was it. Go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, also, it's about you all being conflict alchemists. So being conflict alchemists, it's basically 
if you have this clarity that, you know, if you practice this and you get this clarity that you, that maybe you got here in this call, that you, you will start having what we call unfair conversations where the other, you know, you, you might kind of know a little bit more about it, have more clarity about something and the other, and you're communicating with someone else and having an unfair conversation might mean that you, you drop your agenda, that thing that you really want to talk about. And you just, you support them to get to a place where they can have more clarity or they can be really in relationship to you. Yeah. And Chloe, you were, sorry, I was waving. Uh, Joe was oh, okay, waving. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, keep going. Yeah. So what Jake was saying, you know, he, he had this clarity. And so instead of reacting or, or fixing his grandma, he, he became a, a person of serving, serving her, which was the purpose of also you know, the previous conversation of having a meta conversation. You, you go first, being an alchemist is you, you go first, you put your own poop on a table and you hold space for other people so that they can be in relationship to you and not in relationship to, to your box or, or, or you in relationship with their conflict. You hold that clarity for them because they might not have it yet. And I, can I add something, Vera? Go for it, go for I it. mean, I would add, and you can even hold space for yourself. Like when you notice that you're going into an emotional reaction, that it's like, you're feeling fear for more than three minutes or you're feeling anger or sadness for more than three minutes. And you're in this conversation and you're just like, I'm having an emotion. It has nothing to do with this person across from me. And you, what I do is I pause and I say, I'm sorry. I am sorry. I'm having an emotional reaction right now. I'm feeling really sad because I feel like I'm being criticized by you, for example. I could be, you know, I'm feeling really sad because I feel like I'm, criti I'm being criticized, but actually I'm being, I've been feeling sad for more than three minutes. It has nothing to do with you. And actually it has to do with my dad because it, my dad was always criticizing me. He was always telling me that I was not doing it good enough. So I'm projecting my dad on you and I don't want to do that. So would you give me 20 minutes because you need 20 minutes for the uh, enzyme and hormones kicked in by the emotion to go out of your body, give me 20 minutes and I'll come and talk to you again. And I, and, and I will go do the emotional healing process. I'm going to ask somebody to hold space for me so I can make a new decision and I can finally be with you. So that is so great when you can have that clarity, the other person might not know what's going on, but you're just holding your clarity and, and for yourself and for them. And that's, fantastic yeah yeah thank you Uncle. Mm. yeah Ro rosa hi so to begin with thank you so much i'm seeing a lot of thank yous in the chat for a very in-depth session um and and i'm really appreciating you're going over and you're spending the time with this um i want to kind of uh, connect the dots a little bit with where this started in terms of the very first exercise you invited us into. Because um, one of the things that's been so helpful to me to remember from some of the, the, the training that I've experienced is that we have a very hard time being with another person when we have those feelings, emotions, whatever it is that you're calling the, 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 um, when we have difficulty being present with, with those patterns in ourselves. Right. And so um, I so appreciated the story that Jake was sharing earlier about being with his grandmother. And um, what I was hearing there was, you know, how much work he had done so that he was able to be present with her. And so I just, I just wanted to bring it all the way back around to that very lovely first exercise of just saying, you know, I'm feeling this because of that. I'm feeling this. So I, I just really feel like the more 
we can become comfortable with our own feelings and the more we can heal our emotions the the easier it is to hold that box in our hand yeah yeah um and so yeah so that's it basically um oh one one more thing i i just really uh was very grateful for the person who was sharing the information about about safety i think there was sarah and also all these links to madden america sites um i just um i that's a huge part of my own practice is how can we create psychological safety with a group or with individuals and um and it's so powerful to be able to drop down to the place where we're not you know in the need to be defensive or feeling attacked or or like that so mm -hmm. yeah thank you all thank you rosa thank you rosa i by maria i just want to say because sarah you mentioned it in the same sentence that it seems to me and and then maybe that's an assumption that you were saying i feel safe when i don't feel fear You say, if I don't feel fear, then I can be safe. Is, is that, did you mention that? You know, I think you're pointing out a really good um, distinction that I haven't made yet. Um, that um, that, I, that uh, I did this work before I knew about possibility management. And so I think my vocabulary still hasn't totally integrated what I've fully integrated when I'm learning here about feelings and the power of feelings. Hmm. So, um, so I, 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 so I, I think that's accurate um, that it, it, it's assuming that it's still coming from a paradigm that's in somewhat assuming that the feelings are bad. Mm. Um, and I, I, don't, I don't think that that's true. I do think that, that, um, that what we're talking about is emotions that feel very incredibly difficult and that, that people don't, that, that I haven't known for myself how to handle and the safety paradigm has helped me a lot. Mm. And so I, I, I can only speak from my own experiences that if I focus on getting rid of the emotions, no go. But if I focus on what will create, if I ask myself, what will help me to feel safe? And what do I need to feel safer in my world? And what is driving this fear that will help me to find what I need to feel safer in this world? Um, that, that actually changes my relationship to these intense emotions incredibly mm -hmm. to the point where I'm no longer in an extreme state that someone would lock, want to lock me up for. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Sarah. I, so, Vinetta, sorry, Vinetta had her hand up for a while and then Rosa, yeah. yeah. Uh, just uh, sharing an experience, my experience with the, with, when I work with children of different age groups and with parents, I find the very, you know, the basic need as human beings is to be seen, to be heard, and to be understood. And to be seen in whatever way we are. And when a space is created where it, it's okay to be scared, it's okay to be angry, it's okay to feel the way you're feeling, and I'm hearing you, something melts in that space. And it, it it's amazing how it, it takes just sometimes just a few days and sometimes just a few moments for that shift to happen when a person feels understood and seen completely. I've seen it happening with four and five year old children who are throwing rage and I've also seen it happening with adults. When you say, okay, I, I, I see you completely and I know you're feeling scared and there's a good reason to feel scared and it's perfectly all right to feel scared. Something melts in that moment and the real conversation starts. And that is that I find a defining moment and I can do that when I'm feeling rooted in myself. If I'm, feel, if I'm getting triggered by the emotion of the other person, then I can't hold that space in that way. 
I can't pretend to hold that space because my energy will be picked up, not what I say. So that I find very powerful and it's again being in this space, it's a constant work on myself. I'm saying myself, it's on constant work on self to how, how one is being present to the moment. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vinita. Thank you. R Rosa, you still wanted to say something or? Oh, it's, I think that, I think it's been said for me, it, this was really helpful because I, I don't think I've defined it this way before so clearly, but psychological safety has to do with feeling a sense of connection. It doesn't have anything to do with lack of feeling. So we might be feeling terror, we might be feeling rage, we might be feeling, um, you know, huge grief. But if we feel seen and heard and understood, as Benita said, then we are feeling connected, then there is a safety in that. You know, all the neurobiological stuff about we are designed for connection, we are designed to be in resonance with one another. Thanks. Thank you. I want to check, Kalu, how are you doing? Good. A little bit dispersed by now, but all good. Thanks. We call this a liquid state. We call this a liquid state when the, the things that you thought were solid before and there's new information coming in and it's just like, psh, and it's like, oh, and don't worry, <laughs> it, will, it will come back in soon enough. <laughs> Things. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Hi. Um, quickly, like to share, um, and this is probably something that most of you are aware of, but it, it just became clear to me a few days ago through a conversation with colleagues from um, Latin America. And for those of us who happen to be on the end of a severe trauma and, and profound uh, emotional damage of sorts uh, throughout life. It's grasping the concept of someday you be at that point where you can actually talk to someone else and, and be that person that you know holds quote unquote the knowledge or has been worked on and off or where you've, you've improved yourself to the point where you can actually it's very difficult. It's it's very very difficult, but you're because it's something that is almost ingrained in your DNA. I mean, it's it's something that it, you know. Some some days you'll wake up and, and something over the night, a texture, a sound, it just triggered an entire box of memories that became unlocked, and then you'll go through the day with that. And thinking of the possibility of facilitating processes like that. Is very challenging but when we add the prospect of I'll only be able to help others and create safe spaces and engage in meaningful conversations when I have fully healed myself or when I have reached a point is even more challenging it's come up that then I'll just you know I'll just you know sink myself in some deep hole because I'll never get there you know? <laughs> but Tell one of the things that we spoke about the other yeah. day uh, uh, in the group, the Latin America is exchanging the concept of arrival or, you know, it's like once I get there, once I achieve that or where I come from and what I have to evolve from is the working with the grief, the working with the PTSD, the working with the fact that things are just like this and, and, and just accepting the fact that it may not come to a point where there is a solution, but just living with that fact that there is an, this thing, you know, this, I don't even know how to call it. It's just something I have to live with every day. And every single person that I meet and encounter, my dogs, my daughter, you, everyone is always going to be, it's not part of my box. It's just genetically part of who I am today. And, and maybe eventually it'll be different, but today it is what it is. And, and I just wanted to share that this, the shift in the concept of 
where you come from and where you go to as opposed to how you write the process and what you write the process with makes it so much more easier to handle. You know, to como, well, I'm leaving with this, you know, I'm like, this is what I live with and this is what I work with every day. And it might just be simpler. No, o sea, I, I don't know. I really don't know. Tanya, can I ask you a question? Yes. What's your, what's your work? I'm at a, a pause right now, <laughs> a world pause, but I worked with, for a long time, I worked in conflict transformation and then in what? for extended conflict transformation, okay. just uh, okay. in different parts of the country. And the last work, emotional work I did one-on-one -on -one, uh, was uh, with the families of victims of forced disappearances in Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. And with other women who had gone through similar process like I did. And then my life changed dramatically and I stopped doing that and I moved on to something else. But I'd like to, I working in Mexico, you're always dealing with, particularly working with women. It's not something that you can avoid or pretend that it's not there. So it makes a lot of sense that I would, cons I would call you a trainer, okay, which is different from a teacher. Okay. Mm -hmm. When a teacher comes with information and is, has the knowledge and tries to put the knowledge on the people and a trainer comes in a space and says, what can I do for you? How can we shift this? How we can create different possibilities? How can we create transformation together? Where we both actually go through a transformational process. And I've met a lot of trainers. I, um, I hold space for the trainer path and possibility management. And there's this question of, the work never ends. <laughs> There's something this. And the best solution that I've found for this is to keep building teams. Where are my team? Who am I training next? Where are my apprentices? Who, who can I, you know, what are the young women that I can train up so they can hold space for other women? Or, or maybe, and maybe men, I don't know. But that, that was really something that helped me of saying, I'm building team and I'm building teams who are going to build teams and I'm going to build, you know, it's like trainer training and it's trainer, trainer, training and trainer, 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 training. Um, so that my, I, I just feel this connection and, and the ripples, I just get bigger. So I just wanted to put that in. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Rosa. Yeah. Mm, yeah. You don't have to do it alone. You can't, it it yeah, work so well. Yeah. yeah. Okay, people. I think this is up. This is it for tonight. Thank you very much for keeping the conversation going and participating in all those workshops. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you, Tash and Anna, Michelle. Thank you much. Watch out for your emails. <laughs> We're going to come back. <laughs> okay. Your work hasn't ended yet. That will end after the email goes out. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Blossom. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michelle. Bye. Bye.